Imagine a couple on the brink of divorce. They're hurt and angry. The unhappy, bitter husband recalls the terrible things his wife has done and the reasons he can no longer live with her. The harried and disillusioned wife, in turn, can describe all the ways her husband let her down. Each has a long list of necessary changes for the other person. Yeah, but isn't it valid that sometimes you hear what the other person's complaints are and then you change? Like, isn't that a perfectly valid thing to do? Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe they both have, uh, maybe they both have, like, annoying traits that they need to change, but it's perfectly valid for the other person to say, like, okay, you stop doing this and then I will be happy. And this is also, like, considering the assumption that all people, like, match no matter what. Like, some people just simply do not match with each other. And so even if they do complain about the others, like, if they stop doing, like, what, what, what is that going to change? Like, they're, they're, even if they change themselves, like, they're still not going to fucking match with the other person. Like, some people just simply do not have, like, matching personalities. That's just the fact of the matter. That's why there are so many divorces, because a lot of relationships start off with, uh, I guess you could call, like, a period of infatuation. The fact of the matter is, is that most people, like, have specific preferences and specific personalities and a lot of those personalities go well together, and a lot of those personalities do not go well together. Not every divorce is someone's fault. Yeah. It could even be neither of the people's fault. It could just be the fact that they're incompatible. Yeah, I mean, you know, they say we've grown apart. It means that they don't connect anymore, they don't love each other anymore. Then that's pretty much it. Since these days there's less of a stigma around divorce, and like, it's considered more acceptable and normal, and it's allowed, there's mm -hmm. more divorce. But, I mean... I don't know, and how is this even relevant to politics? He's basically saying, like, oh, well, whenever there's a divorce, like, people don't ever blame themselves, they blame others, which is not even true. I've seen people who have, like, been in divorces or, like, really long rela relationships and then separate, and they always question themselves. Like, I've always seen people question themselves and fucking... I mean, unless they're, like, really narcissistic, narcissistic yeah. and they think that nothing is ever their fault, like, most people can recognize that maybe there could be a problem with them. You know? Yeah. Let's just fucking, like, I think most people have had personal experiences where they can confirm that that is true. That, uh, people, that they fucked up. Yeah, that, that people always question themselves as well in those kinds of situations. It's never one-sided. Like, it never is one-sided. Like, this is just dishonest. And this can't be generalized into politics. This analogy doesn't work because a proletarian and a capitalist are not like a married couple. They're not equal people yeah. in a rela in a relationship where they both have gripes and like they both have complaints it's it's more like a dictatorial relationship their prospects for reconciliation are grim i mean first of all if just we look at mao's antagonistic and non-antagonistic contradiction in uh, how to correctly handle contradiction among the people between man and and a woman you can potentially have reconciliation and you can potentially settle the problems and everything, but there can never be fucking reconciliation between an exploiter and the exploited. Exactly. The fact of the matter is, is that the dynamic of proletarian and landowner or bourgeois, whatever you want to call Slave and slave owner or whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to refer to, that's uh, literally an abusive relationship. It's it's an abusive relation, literally a contradiction. Let's say you have a, a wife and a husband, and the husband is like relentlessly beating the shit out of the wife every every day. Yeah, They're supposed like, to like yeah. reconcile, and they like both. <laughs> the wife is just yeah, supposed the, to look yeah. at themselves like, oh yeah, what could I? Maybe it's me. Maybe I just need to like, I need to just like be better at fucking dodging punches and like. <laughs> be better at uh, not pissing off my my fucking husband for literally not doing anything. That's what I need to do. Oh, man. Why? Because other people aren't the problem. Sometimes they are. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> like, this is just so... Sometimes they aren't, but sometimes they fucking are. He literally is so fucking uh, shallow in his ideology that he will make such a bold statement as, uh, it's never the other person, it's always... Never. Let's say there's a situation where one person is at fault, like, objectively, and Peterson comes in and he's like, uh, neither of you should be blaming the, the other, it's, it's you. And it's like, okay, well, there's still an objective 
truth to which one is actually at fault. Like, you can't just universally apply this fucking, this, this sentiment. It's impossible. Okay, so, it's never the other person's fault. So, Jordan, when the fucking feminists criticize you, you shouldn't blame them. Just, like, look at the stuff that you say yourself. Like, that's actually surprisingly valid in this, in this yeah, case. Like, yeah, in this instance... In the instance when it applies to him, it's far more valid than when he actually applies it to other fucking subjects. <laughs> You're the problem. You can't change other people, but you can change yourself. But it's difficult. Okay, like, yeah, I mean, that's true. You can't change the other person's mind. Only the other person can change their own mind. But we can change the political system, though. No, we should just, like, I, just get used to it. Just, this is how it is. Just fucking don't complain. Just get used to it. Just, like... We have slavery now, so don't complain, just adapt to slavery. Just get used to the idea of slavery. Yeah, this is like almost like stoic level philosophy, like it's so fucking... Uh, like the classic opium of the masses, like... Like, you can't change political uh, systems, just like... Get used to it, just find peace within yourself, like it's all gonna be better in the afterlife, well... Imagine like, Renaissance Jordan Peterson during the French Revolution, it's just like, no, no, feudalism is fine. <laughs> you can't change it, you can't change it, you, feudalism will just be forever. Feudalism is not the problem, the problem is you. <laughs> it takes courage to change, and it takes discipline. It's much easier and much more gratifying to your basest desires to blame someone else for your misery. That is the message. Consider the youthful activist making a statement against the corrupt capitalist system by smashing in the storefront of a local business. What has he done other than to bring harm to people who have nothing to do with his real problems? Sure, but I think Zizek put it very well. Zizek said, in times of violent riots or whatever protests, you know, whenever violent things like that happen, it pretty much signifies that there is some problem that cannot be simply described with words and it's an automatic psychological response to fuck to, shit up to fuck shit up because when there's a sociological problem that is encompassing society and it's so difficult to explain and understand the majority of people it's their literal instinct to act out in violently like if there is violence happening maybe it's not just because people are fucking, like, stupid or whatever Peterson thinks. It's because there is a literal cause, a literal psychological and sociological cause for violent acting out. Let's take the example of, like, a peasant uprising, like a medieval peasant uprising. Or let's take a slave revolt. So the, the slaves rise up and they burn buildings, they kill a bunch of people who maybe are totally innocent, who are not, like, the slave owner, but they just kill anybody who comes yeah. in their way. Does that mean that we have to support slavery and we have to just be like, oh, don't rise up? Like, yeah. clearly, the fucking system of slavery has created this situation where there's an oppressed class who rises up and sometimes goes too far and, like, commits excesses and violent acts because of the oppression that they have always faced. Yeah, exactly. It's unfortunate, and yeah, we shouldn't... He's saying it's good when, like, you just when innocent people get hurt during, like, times of change. Like, nobody's saying that that should be strived for, but unfortunately, it's just a fucking, like, it just happens. Not because people are just bad people or fucking stupid or fucking whatever. It's just the conditions that the people are in that may lead them to commit excessive violence or whatever. The French Revolution, like, didn't achieve the goals of, like, liberty and equality and all that, and they killed a bunch of people and they did all kinds of stuff, and we shouldn't necessarily glorify it, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that it wasn't correct to overthrow absolute monarchy. Yeah, exactly. We don't want to go back to monarchism. The guilt, doubt, and shame he will inevitably feel in consequence will have to be suppressed, so his beliefs can remain unchanged. And that suppression will do nothing but foster his anger and alienation. In the play The Cocktail Party by American English poet T.S. Eliot, one of the characters is having a very hard time of it. She speaks of her profound unhappiness to her psychiatrist. She tells him that she hopes her suffering is all her own fault. Taken aback, the psychiatrist asks why. Because, she tells him, if it's her fault, she can do something about it. If it's in the nature of the world, however, She's doomed. She can't change everything else. 
There are definitely feelings of despair when there's a wider sociological like cause for one person's problems, but that's why we organize in solidarity. Like, yeah, sure, one person can't fucking change the system, like, can't fucking do everything, but that's why people organize. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing, like, to think that your own things are not related to the outside world, if you need to, like, steal for your own survival or something, to just say, oh, I should just be a better person and not steal anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, you're gonna fucking die from starvation yeah. unless you're a good person. <laughs> like, or, like, whatever a good person means, like, okay, sure, by society's standards, you're considered a good person, but you're gonna fucking die. Like, okay, There's very you... few people who just consciously choose a life of crime or commit crime just for the excitement of it or something. Most people do it because they grow up in a less than ideal environment and they are introduced to a life of crime or they are, it's necessary because of their survival, basically. Unless they're like truly psychopathic, they all have some sort of like childhood cause or, or just that. Not necessarily just in childhood, but there's some cause to it. Like, even, like, the richer criminals, like, they they probably lived a life of crime, like, from very young. The lines get blurry because, you know, distinguishing between, like, mega-rich criminals and mega-rich capitalists, like, becomes harder and harder because, like, the richer the capitalist is, the more likely that they've been involved in some criminal fucking activity. Like, that's just the case. Yeah, and, like, really rich criminals would have to be doing capitalism, too. Yeah, exactly. Even the rich have psychological issues. Like, rich people aren't just fucking evil people. Yeah, they're like, sociopaths and, like, narcissists. They have, like, yeah, diagnosed have conditions. Yeah, they have legitimate psychological issues. Due to the system that due, they yeah, operate in. the system in. that they're operating in, the, the superficial nature of, of being upper class, and et cetera, et cetera. Like, there's a fucking reason, like, I don't think any educated Marxist legitimately believes that, uh, one, like, the bourgeoisie is just a bunch of, like, evil-ass people, and two, the fact that there are evil people in the first place. Like, in my view, nobody is evil. Like, everybody has their own sense of what they think is good and wanting to be good people, but there is some issue in the way of them being good people or in the way of them, you know, being uh, altruistic and etc. Like, everybody in their subconscious want to be a good person, but not everybody has the fucking opportunity to, you know? They, like, they either, like, and they always, like, they rationalize whatever bad things they're doing. Like, if you're a criminal, you're not going to think, like, you're a bad person. You're going to either try to suppress any feelings that this is bad, or you're going to... you're going to rationalize it, like, oh, well, I'm doing this for my family. Yeah, whatever. I'm doing this for my family, I'm doing this for my honor of my gang, or whatever, or this is just what it is. Michael Parenti talked about capitalist pathology, how, like, the the capitalists, of course, rationalize everything they're doing. They think that they're job creators, and, like, they think that they have earned their luxurious life by their own brilliance. Of course, nobody thinks that I'm just, like, a worthless piece of shit who's, like... Yeah. I mean, they always rationalize it. They think that the capitalists, a lot of them truly believe that they are rich because they're just so hardworking and so smart... Poor people are poor because they're lazy, and that's basically what Jordan Peterson is saying. He's saying if you are poor, then There's, it's it's, it's you. because you are just you are lazy and you're stupid. So like, I've said this a million times. Like, are, are all the African women who like carry drinking water from like five hours away on foot like are just they're all just lazy? That's why they're poor. Jeff Bezos he goes and takes a good long shit, and when he comes out of the toilet, he's like fucking billions richer than when he went in because of all yeah. his, like, stocks, like, yeah. rising. Yeah, he takes his shit, and then he, like, he comes out on the toilet, like, oh, I just made $300 million. Like, okay. Now, now there, there are, are people who seem to be consigned to a terrible fate, but most, most of us aren't. Most, most of us have a chance to make our lives better. better. But, but how? Start, start small. Clean your room. Ask yourself a few questions. Have you taken full advantage of the opportunities offered to you? Are you working to your fullest capacity at school or at work? Have you, in other words, set your own house in order? Since we're talking about fictional creations, let's look at Breaking Bad. So, in Breaking Bad, I mean, this is probably not much of a spoiler at this point, that it's about a chemistry teacher who starts selling meth because he needs money for his cancer treatment. Should he just, like, look at himself and be like, oh, I'm a bad person because I am 
dealing with this unfortunate circumstance. Or maybe you could say that instead of having to deal with the private healthcare system, they should just have socialized healthcare and that whole fucking show would never have happened. Stop doing what you know to be wrong. You can know something is right or wrong without knowing why. There's investors right now who are investing in like sweatshops and, and funding all kinds of immoral things and what have you. We have been over this. Like the socialist movement originally thought, the utopian socialists originally thought, yeah, we just need to convince the capitalists that capitalism is immoral and socialism is better. Well, guess what? You can't fucking convince the capitalists. Like, it's in their nature that they don't want to give up their privileged position. Yeah, and they will rationalize it however they want. He's about to say, like, you, you know what's right from wrong. Like, no, you don't, because you can easily fucking rationalize something that... Nobody thinks what they are doing is wrong. Nobody thinks that they are evil. Fucking Hitler thought he was doing a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, Hitler just needed to realize what he was doing was yeah, wrong. Hitler well, no. Hitler just needed to fucking, like, tap into his fucking deep-rooted, like, sense of right and wrong. I just don't fucking understand. Like, it's just such a fucking, like... It's childish. Way. It's a childish way of fucking thinking about it. Do you procrastinate? Show up late? Spend money you don't have? And drink more than you should? I mean, I'm sure these kinds of basic life management skills can help some you know, people, well, but... But this is not profound. This is not profound. Like, this has been said by thousands of people, if not more. The bad thing about Peterson is he's using, like, these, like, very basic... And yeah, like, actually like, valid things. ...to to propagate his political agenda. Like, exactly. Like, I, I've said this before, how, like, in the past, we used to have these, like, leftist fucking gurus who were saying, like, yeah, take better care of your your own life and like also uh, preaching universal love and like all this universal brotherhood. Now we have these fucking cynical right-wing gurus who are teaching the same basic life management skills but they're also like throwing in fucking Christian conservatism and like imperialism, white supremacy and yeah. worshipping the rich and everything. Yeah, I mean I'd much rather have like a hippie than fucking drogue. Exactly. <laughs> it's a dialogue with your own conscience. Well, I will say this. People do have an inherent sense of empathy, so I guess you could tap into your own inherent sense of empathy, but that's not enough. People have empathy. Everybody has empathy, but there's ways of, like, trying to block your empathy and, like, yeah, trying there's... to trying to distance yourself. Like, okay, maybe you couldn't kill somebody yourself, but you can pay for a hitman. Yeah, you can rationalize your sympathy, like, like okay, well, I sympathize with this person that, that I'm going to kill, but, like, I sympathize more, like, with my family, or, and w with my future fucking children, like... Yeah, you might feel bad, but not bad enough to change, like... And in capitalism, it's so easy, because it's so, like, removed, like, okay, I am paying for the exploitation of child labor in Bangladesh, but you don't ever have to see them, you don't ever have to, like, know what it's like, it's in a different country, like, it's so far removed that it's even easier to do it. Like, you just invest in some fucking company, you don't know what they do. Like, you have you have moved the moral agency to some local guy in Bangladesh, and you don't have to deal with it. At this point, I'm, like, just so fucking, like, convinced that, that Jordan Peterson, like, got a fucking B in psychology. Like, <laughs> like... Nah, he's just... This is just... It's just fucking charlatanry. Yeah, but, like, the shit that he's saying, he's like, oh, well, it's an internal dialogue with your consciousness. Like, it's just so fucking basic level, like, it's just fucking childish as hell, like, it's just so fucking childish. I mean, maybe he's dumbing himself down for, like, people. Oh, he, I think he is. Yeah, maybe that's what it is, but... He's dumbing himself down to make money off of his audience, that's definitely what it is. Yeah, because, like, I I've never heard him say anything really interesting regarding psychology, like, he just says shit that you can learn from, like, fucking psychology one, you know? Get to work on time. Make peace with your siblings and your parents. What if your siblings literally fucking, like, tried to murder you? If you do those things, your life will improve. You'll become more peaceful, productive, and desirable. And another problem I have with this is that it's totally shitty ethical outlook, because it's saying, this is still like the same Abrahamic shit, where it's saying the people who did what God told them got rich. And Jordan Peterson is saying the people who follow these guidelines are going to be more desirable, more successful. It says nothing about doing the right thing because it's the right thing. It's like totally fucking garbage ethical philosophy. It's all purely selfish. It's not about doing the right thing at all. It's purely fucking selfish. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the problem with fucking liberalism. Like, this is Paul Zizek again because it's very relevant. But basically, like, he was talking about how people say that the left appropriates fascism or whatever. 
What does that mean? Appropriate fascism? Basically, like, okay, like, basically what he was saying was, um, the left appropriates fascism, like, he was like, it's not, it's, it's not a joke, but, but this is what it actually means, like, having rehabilitated notions of duty, and oh. justice, and, and collectivism, and sacrifice, and... Discipline, and... Di yeah, discipline, yeah. And, 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 you know, having duty to others, and overall society, and, and being willing to sacrifice yourself for others. I mean, it even exists more in leftism than in fascism. Like, in fascism, it's just fucking empty rhetoric. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so he's like, he's like, I don't think these things are inherently fascism, even if fascists like to fucking appropriate these, these principles. The left should use these things. And he's saying that they should use those things to combat, like, liberalism. Like, he talked about how, like, nowadays... Everything that you do in capitalist society, in individualist society, is based upon self-fulfillment or self, self-enrichment. self Like, oh, well, you should live a life like this because uh, you will be, like, you'll be successful, you'll be productive, whatever. But, like, why not just be that way because it's fucking nice to be to other, like, it's just nice to be fucking good to other people or a productive member of society. Like, what if that's just, like, a duty thing and not a way for you to, like, fucking enrich yourself, you know? Uh, or, like, for example, he was joking about how, like, he read a magazine at an airport that was, like, talking about all the scientific reasons why sex is good. You know, like, how sex is good for people. It's like... Okay, oh, yeah, like, it, you don't... You, you do it for an instrumental value and not for, like, the thing itself. Play, yeah, exactly. That's that's really what this is. Like, that's... that's this is, like, peak individualism at this point. If like, they... If, like, if they say, like love makes you healthier, so therefore love is good, like, okay, yeah, exactly, as if love's exactly. not good on its own, like... Yeah, exactly. Instead of bringing trouble to yourself, your family, and your society, you'll be a positive and reliable force, even come to act nobly and with purpose. But isn't that what political activism is? No. Well, only if you're a right-winger. <laughs> the proper way to fix the world isn't to fix the world. There's no reason to assume that you're even up to such a task. But you can fix yourself. Well, just get out of politics then. What the fuck are you doing on PragerU? There's no reason to assume that you're up for such a task. Why? Why is it? Why is there no reason to assume that you're not up to such a task? Like, what? For what fucking reason? I mean, you could try. You could try your best. Yeah, you could try your best to be a contributing and productive person and the most rational and ethical person you could possibly be. I'm Jordan Peterson, professor of psychology at the University of Toronto, for Prager University. And we have been Finnish Bolshevik. Polish. For Big Brain University. <laughs>